It snowed. So you know what that means? We're weaving Christmas ornaments. It's totally fair game now. Let's get started. So these are the four Christmas ornament looms I have available at spruceandlinen.com. But of course, if you don't have these same looms and you just have a regular loom, you can always, you know, take some tips or tricks from this weave with me and weave them on a regular loom. The first thing that we're gonna do before we get fully started is we're gonna warp one of these together so you can get a hang of how it works. So we're gonna do the rectangle one, but the rest of them are exactly the same. It's really not too tricky. I'm using 4-8 cotton for this. It's our thinnest warp string, and so it is kind of good for these because um, for me, I want the warp to sort of disappear. I wanna work with some chunky materials that I have laying here in front of me. In order to warp these, what I like to do is I'll just go along, well for this, this one is pretty simple because we know we need about this much to warp from here to here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 11 holes, so one, eleven. take a little extra. We will have too much, but it's always better to have a little bit too much. So that's how you figure out how much string you need. And the same goes for all the other looms, but on ones like this tree loom, I just like to go across like this along each of these holes. Then I get to the top and then all I do is I double that up, give myself a little extra and cut that off. It's not a perfect measurement, but it works. So weaving on these little looms is a lot like weaving on a hoop. The weaving itself is actually going to stay on the frame itself. So I'm gonna just pick one end to start from and I'm just putting my warp string through the hole. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail here. And then I'm gonna take the other end and I'm gonna go straight up to the top hole. Then from there, I'm gonna flip it over and now I'm going to go to the hole next to the one I just came through. And then we can go back down. And now that we're at the bottom again, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna tie these ends together just in a knot and we don't need to pull super hard or anything on that and then you can leave the tail you can cut it off now whatever you prefer one thing i will say with these little guys is that you you want to make sure that your warp isn't too tight because it is going to tighten up really quickly again a lot like circle weaving and because it lives straight on this loom it's not gonna get any looser at any point so i'm gonna leave mine fairly loose you can see that it's not really very tight at this point. So since we came back to the bottom, I'm once again going to go in the hole beside the one we just came through. So basically what we're doing is we're weaving bottom to top and then to the side and then back down. So it's a lot the same as a regular loom, but instead of going around a peg, we're going through holes. Okay, so I have warped this all the way across. And you can see these strings are like, they're super loose right now, so I might wanna tighten them up a little bit. And all you have to do for that is just to sort of pull up and down on the strings like so, and that's a bit better. It's quite loose, but I'm just, I'm, I know that I've had challenges before with making these too tight, so I wanna be really careful not to do that again. So I'm just pulling really gently. Once you're happy with the tension, Basically what you can do is you can grab something like a little yarn needle or whatever kind of needle that you can fit your warp string through. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this loop, which we might need to loosen the strings a little bit at first to get to. There we go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that's tight enough. And I'm gonna tie a knot on this end as well. And then it looks like my knot is sort of pointing down this way. So I'm gonna see if I can loop this back around. Yeah, to get it pointing the other way. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off the excess on both ends. And actually this one too, since the knot is sort of pointing up and I don't want the tail to stick up above the loom itself. I'm just gonna take that little tail and see if I can get it pointing in the other direction. There we go. So that's one loom warped. I'm gonna warp the others and then we're gonna get started with weaving. I think I'm gonna start with the rectangle one. I wanna start on like an easy one. So let's decide what we're gonna do here. I have a ton of materials in front of me. 
We're going to start with some fringe and I'm just using three millimeter cotton string, two strands at a time. And since there's an odd amount of strings on this little loom, I'm gonna go around two warp strings for everything except for in the middle. I'm gonna go around three. Okay, so we have some fringe. I'm gonna not cut it straight just yet, but next I'm going to take some of this three millimeter cotton string in this pretty red color. And I basically wanna make this one look just like a mini woven wall hanging. So I'm gonna start out just with some plain weave. It's gonna be a really simple design. And we'll tuck this little end back in here. If I can get it in there. So next I kind of want to do some like sumac stitch out in the middle and I'm thinking probably with this roving. We just have to decide how thick we want it to be. So I think I'll do one more row of plain weave and then I'm going to fish this tail back and I might just tuck it in right away so that I don't have to worry about it later. Yeah, let's just tuck this in. Actually, I think I'm gonna use a smaller needle to do that. Okay, so the ends are tucked in. And now I'm thinking I'm gonna take this wool. I think this is about a half width currently and I'm gonna split it in half again. You could totally, if you don't wanna use like wool roving, you could use something like silk ribbon or just like a chunky yarn to do this exact same thing. Whatever you have, it'll totally work. I think this little piece of um, wool is actually a little too thick. So I'm gonna take my other piece cause it is a little bit thinner and I'm gonna go around two strings and then I'm not gonna skip two. I'm just gonna go around the next two. Then I'm gonna go around three in the middle like we did for the fringe and then around the next two and the next two. That feels a little bit better. I'm going to take this off <laughs> and hope, do I have enough? I might just have enough. And then I wanna go the opposite direction now. I think I've just made it. Then I'm gonna tuck all those ends through to the back carefully. Oh, that looks so cute. Oh my goodness. That is such a little tiny sumac stitch with roving. Now this is going to be kind of the challenging part back here because we need to tuck in these ends, but it's going to be a little bit tricky. I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use this little yarn needle. I'm going to take both ends since it is decently thin. And I'm just gonna go through right here and I'm hoping that'll be enough. I think I won't cut off the excess until I have more plain weave on top of it just to be safe. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna just weave more plain weave with this red in the same amount. So six more rows. It's already getting pretty tight near the top here. So one trick we can use, well, there's a couple things we can do. One of them is to use a smaller thinner tapestry needle. Um, but another one is just to squish everything way down and then we'll bring it back up when we're done. So I'm going to weave uh, four more rows and then we'll see where we're at. Okay. So now I'm just trying to pull everything back <laughs> up and spread it out. It's not like the most ideal kind of scenario, but you do what you gotta do on these little pieces. And my my merino wool roving, roving definitely got a little hairy on me. So I'm just trying to like create some more definition here. I think I'm quite happy with that. It's so cute. 
see if I can push this up a little bit more. Ideally, we would cover the, up all the holes, but sometimes it's just not possible depending on what material you're weaving with. And honestly, I think it's totally fine. I think it's still super cute. And now I can definitely trim off the excess here. I don't wanna trim it too short so they don't pop out on me, but I think that'll be good there. And what you can always do with these in the back of them, if you're not happy with like how clean they look in the back, you could always put like a little piece of fabric and, and glue it in there if that's something that bugs you. But I think generally speaking, it's not a big deal. And then I'm just gonna tuck in this rope. And now that everything's in place, I'm a little nervous <laughs> that my knot won't stay. So if you're also nervous of that, you can always dab a little bit of glue on that that knot back there but earlier my knots came out and so now I feel a little bit less confident in them so I'm gonna actually tuck in the warp string right through here just like I would do any other any weft just so that if that knot wasn't gonna stay it will now this knot I'm not too worried about because I know that one's good so I'm gonna trim that one off and that's what the back looks like then for this particular one, we can actually add a little hanging string. So I'm just gonna take a piece and I'm going to put it through this first hole and tie a knot, cut off the excess. I can cut that a little shorter. And then I'm gonna come to the other side and I'm gonna pick a length for this. It's something like in that range looks good to me. And then I can cut the excess off again. And now I'm just gonna double check the bottom. And by double check, I mean I'm gonna straighten out the bottom a bit. And there we have a super cute little woven wall hanging. Okay, I love this one. Super simple, super cute. Let's move on to the next one. For the circle ornament, I wanted to keep it really simple and yet still pretty and Christmassy. The challenge here is with a circle shape, of course, is I needed to create some organic shapes to really fill it in nicely. Okay, I really love the way that this one turned out. As you can see with the ends all tucked in, it's like not too crazy on the back here. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I added a little hanging string so it can be hung on the tree really simply. And I'm really happy with this one. I haven't woven a ton of the circle ones, but I feel like this is probably the best way to do it. And the good news is you can do it with any color combination and it's gonna look great. So next up we have the tree. And I think the best course of action for the tree is to do something kind of stripey. So I'm gonna start with some of the same green merino wool roving. And then I took three millimeter cotton string and I took two strands and basically just tied a bunch of knots in them. And the next step, I'm using some of the beige wool roving to do the exact same thing I did with the green. Okay, now I'm done with the beige. So I'm going to use more of the cotton string. Okay, so I'm basically just going to do what I did before. I really think the trick with these ornament looms is to keep your weaving pretty basic because you're working with such a small space. It's honestly kind of tricky to do anything super intricate when you're working in like really confined, you know, a really confined frame like this. It is a lot easier just to do something simple. So something I'm seeing here, look what we've got going on here. The wool roving was going under, then this is going under and this is going under. I am not happy with that. It looks kind of weird. So I think I'm going to have to change that up. So basically I just kind of put that knot to cover up that string because I didn't like how it looked like this long floating warp string there. So now I can go back under here. So now I can cut this off because I tucked in that end earlier. Now I'm gonna take one more fairly thin piece of this wool roving and I'm going to try to just fill the rest of the space with this. Oh, this is going so much better <laughs> than I thought it would at the top here. So I'm thinking if I just wrap this one more time around the very top, and then maybe if I go down, see how like this string looks a little bit exposed? Maybe if I just go down this way, 
Oh my gosh, that worked so well. And if I just give myself a little slack here, oh my goodness. I feel like that's so cute. It got a little fuzzy on me. It's, I mean, it is what it is. It's a little hard not to agitate the wool robing too much, but I feel like this looks really sweet. And by sweet, I mean like cute sweet, not like sweet, though I say that too, but you know. All right, the hanging string is super simple. I'm just taking a length of warp string. I'm tying an overhand knot. I'm just leaving a really short tail. And then I'm going to take that loop, put it through the top of my loom, and then feed the other end through it. And then it just sort of loops around like that. And now it's ready to hang. And obviously these, these can always be adjusted. If it needs to be shorter, you can just tie another knot and trim off the excess. All right, friends, we have one more loom to go and it's the little house loom. Let's look at the other ones just for our reference. So these two really tie in well together. And then we have this one, which ties in, but the reds are a little bit different, but I think it still goes okay. I do think it would be a good idea for me to at least use this red in the house because I want there to be sort of, you know, if there's co cohesion between these two, let's make some cohesion between these two. So I'm going over one, under one. I'm going to do that twice with each color, I think. Then I'm going to finish on the over because I think that will look better, but I'm gonna sort of lift this up and go through here like so. And I'm going to tuck in at least this end now because then it just is less threading of the needle later. And here they all are. I think they're so cute and they'd make fantastic gifts. Click right here to watch more of our Christmas weaving tutorials.